Okay? So, for today, we are just going to discuss with you. I'm not going to focus per se on uh, Marxism, okay, per se, okay, in the idea of Marx. I, I really appreciate the report of Miss Melody, the report of Miss Melody with regards to the introduction to Marxism. And I did not expect because I just said that the report should be focused into the pedagogy of the press. But it's a nice thing to, to also to revisit okay, the ideas of Marx, the life and universe of Marx. Okay. But basically the reason why I did not I don't want to concentrate on Marx okay, per se, it's because Marx don't have any any he did not write anything about innovation. So although he has a very okay, uh, thick write up about a critic of society and the critic of capitalism, but there is no really uh, writings about education. Okay? So, and if we're going to talk about Marxism and education, of course, okay, uh, the, 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 the philosopher that we need to revisit is particularly Paulo Freire. It's because he was the one who was able to look into education as, as not a neutral ideology, but a political ideology. Okay? So, and uh, his work is entitled uh, Pedagogy of the Press. And usually, uh, I usually ask my students that if you were able to read Pedagogy of the Press in your undergrad, yes, si Ma'am uh, Badi na nabasa mo. Okay, saan nga po nga nabito sa PNC? Sino na required ng readings? Okay. Sino pa? What else? Ang iyong program ay? Okay. One step. Okay. Sino pa? Bukod kay Georgina. Anyone ang familiar? Narinig nyo lang or ngayon nyo lang narinig? Ha? Sino ngayon lang narinig? Kanina lang, kanina. So, yun ang one of the problem. Ano, actually, if you are, if this should be a required reading to all those who are taking uh, education in the free service. Uh, the must read books, okay, or even uh, book na lang, it's rare. Eh? Because your free service thing is not complete without reading the pedagogy of the press. And then another worth reading as well is uh, the miseducation of Renato Constantino. So, yun na kailangan nyo rin kung yung mabasa. Medyo malipis-lipis lang naman yung miseducation of the Philippines. If you really wanted to understand uh, the Philippine educational landscape, you really need to understand and to read Renato Constantino. And of course, there are so many, you know, there are so many, but these are just my suggestions. This is for the undergrad, okay? Uh, don't worry, I'm not really surprised that it's your first time to hear that uh, about the pedagogy of the press. It's because even in my uh, PhD students, you know, they are not really familiar with uh, Paulo Freire, the ideas of Paulo Freire. It's because I use uh, Paulo Freire as a framework in teaching uh, transformative education. So, in one of the four courses in PhD. So, uh, siguro it would be better for us to to look into uh, the uh, ideas of pedagogy of the press by looking into a chapter. It's maganda mag chapter by chapter style. By looking into chapters. Okay? So, but first, okay, there are uh, three important words that we need to consider in the philosophy of the press. Okay? So the title of the work of Freire, okay, it was written almost uh, ano ba, 50 years ago, 1968. And then it was translated into English in 1971. Do you try to imagine, ano, medyo, 
bago-bago pa lang, but it's already considered as a classic. So, ngayon, ang philology of the press, if you're going to buy it in the market, medyo yung libro, medyo mahal na yung libro niya. So, even the free love books na mga bentahan na ngayon ay 600. So, ako, pag magpapabig, for example, it might cost even to up to 1,000. So, kasi talaga medyo rare at mahirap na rin natin yung mga, lalo na yung mga first editions niya. So, that is not his first work, but his second work. He particularly contains his reflections about his educational activities and struggle okay, that he have done in Brazil okay, during their adult literacy program. Okay. He wrote it while he was in exile. So, It contains, okay, siguro it would be better for us to take a look into the title. You know? So the title is The Pilagogio of, of the Opress. Okay? So when we speak of the Pilagogio of the Opress, okay, uh, it is divided into four chapters. Okay? So una is the note. Chapter one is concerned about melody. What is the concern of chapter one? It's not just humanization, but the concern is the justification of the philology of the oppress. Meaning to say, why there's a need okay, for the philology of the oppress. Of course, the reason is the rationale uh, on why there, there's a need for the philology of the oppress is because there is the humanization and oppression. Okay, next, chapter 2. Uh, Angelo, ano, ano sa tingin mo magandang title ng chapter 2? Okay, so it's not just a banking concept. It's because Even the problems uh, posing education was introduced by Freire in that chapter. So that is concerning to the banking model of education and problem posing education. That is in chapter 3. Next, chapter 3. Moving. Uh, but he has, in chapter 3, he has a more extensive discussion into dialogical, or particularly the problem posing education, and how to do the dialogical pedagogy, okay, by using reflection in action, right? By having codification, okay, and then the generative themes, etc. Okay, so that is in chapter 3. Now, let's now go back to the chapter 4, Melody. Okay, we, we talk about two kinds of cultural action. Okay, we have the anti-dialogical first, and then we have the dialogical. Okay, so later on, we na natin. So, now, if we're going to take a look at it, okay, uh, the idea is, okay, the title is the Pilagogy of the Office. Okay, it's because, okay, if we're going to take a look at it, it has something to do with, okay, diba? The, the, the first chapter deals with the oppression. Well, particularly, the, that it's, it's a critique of society. That in the society, in our society, there is a recognition that there is oppression. Okay? That the society is divided into the oppressor and the, the oppressed. Okay? So, if we're going to take a look at it, okay, that according to him, according to, to Freire, okay, uh, oppression is it's, it's a reality. There's a recognition that oppression is a reality. Okay? And the idea of Freire here in the context of oppression is one of the criticism in the pedagogy of the oppressed is uh, Freire only limited his discussion into the truly of class. It's particularly a too simplistic. Why? It's because it's, 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 it seems that Freire was really not able to understand the myrans of oppression. Okay? But later on, we can add it. So, uh, here, from this perspective, we could see that Freire is already adapting the truly of class of farmers. In the Communist Manifesto, okay, 
Diba? Marx had said that history is the history of the class struggle. Okay? That history is divided okay, between two classes, the, the upper class and the lower class. So, and if we're going to take a look at the history during the slavery period, we have the masters and the slaves, and during the, the feudalists, the feudal, we have the feudal lords and the pe peasants. And then right now, in capitalism, we have the bourgeois and the proletariat, or basically the bosses and the workers. Okay? That is basically, okay, the, there, there, there is a recognition, okay? Clearly recognize that there is indeed a a there's there's an oppression. But before we proceed into that discussion per se, okay, into the ideas of into discussing oppression, okay, for Clary, okay, he was able to come up with this okay, claim that there is oppression, it's because okay, it is his lived experience. Uh, and we can argue with his lived experience, right? It's because that is his experience. That was his experience in Brazil. But, siguro, it was also very important for us to really know it's this really oppression right now. The oppression, ba? Okay? Or are you really convinced that there's oppression? Well, siguro, it would be better for us, okay, as an activity, that we need to talk to one another. Okay? That you look for partner, makatapat na lang. I am going to give you uh, maybe six minutes, ano, pero you need to talk to your to your partner for two minutes and then after that, okay, you look for another one, okay, another partner after two minutes and then you talk again. And then another two minutes, once na, na ano uli siya, you talk again to, to another uh, your classmates. And then later on, we're going to maybe look into your experiences whether there is maybe oppression. Baka naman wala. Kasi if, if there is no oppression, what's the use of talking about these things? Right? Magpulihan na lang tayo. Kasi palukuhan lang sinasabi ni Freire. Okay? So, sige. Uh, I'm going to give you now uh, 10 Ah, uh, two minutes each. Okay. Sige, two minutes. Start now. Oh, stand up na lang kayo para... Bakit na lang para hindi na sila Okay, you can take a look at any types of oppression, man. Any 
sabi mo wala. So, convince kayo na meron. So, saan ang nangyayari kong pressure? Sige, please mga test.
When I went to Boracay two years ago, pinapiritahan ko yung makawang mga mga pinapiritahan ko sa mga ati. So, nandita lang yung taste nila. You try to imagine, nakilaki ng Boracay. All of a sudden, yung taste na lang nila ngayon, napakalipit. Pero ang problema, pinito ka pa rin ng uh, mga hand-grabbers. Parang, nag-spend ako din yata ng two hours. Pero wala akong hindi naman, just visited the area. Play with the kids, I just played basketball with them. And then after that, kumain. Nag-merienda lang kami. Parang pustahan na, nagpatalo na lang kami. Uh, yung mga soft drinks and all that. And then I talk to the head and the head. Meron kasi hindi sila musili po. So, medyo ano, para at least makita din yung rich history ng Buracay. At saka yung medyo panik na sign ng Buracay. Okay, what else? So, we talk about the indigenous people. Okay, what else? Meron pa ba? Yes, I do. I think there is an impression in culture. Okay. Between the rich and, and the poor. 
Okay, right? Okay. But the accusation against one of the criticisms against uh, Freire is Freire becomes so uh, simplistic. Okay? Simplistic in the sense that he was able to recognize other forms of oppression, such as, for example, oppression in the family, oppression in culture, oppression in ethnicity. Okay? But basically, Freire was able to recognize it in his in this later works. Okay? And what is a good thing about Freire is that he also promotes okay, dialogue also in his works. Okay? So that's why he collaborated as well with other thinkers, okay? other philosophers and educators in order to talk about the myrans and the dynamics of oppression. Okay? And we can identify it okay? that when we speak of Pahintay lang ako na pupunga para Pahintay na lang
Okay, so we are, uh, as I have said, the problem with uh, Freire is that in the reality of the press, I mean, Freire uh, was only referring to the idea of oppression with respect to classes. But uh, what is a good thing about it is that okay, it's too simplistic, right? Uh, the oppressed and the oppressor, and there's so many okay, violence and dynamics of oppression. But okay, my my answer to that is particularly you can't understand oppression without okay, looking into the basic of oppression. And it's very, very important for us to understand it. Okay? But basically, why is that okay, limited to the idea of class? Okay? So it's, it's for us, it is better for us to reconsider okay, the idea of prayer with respect to okay, society. And uh, as I have said, okay, uh, Freire adopted the idea of society of Marx. Okay? And for, for Marx, okay, uh, according to him, okay, society can be understood into this description. That society is divided, this is the blueprint of the society. It's divided between the infrastructure and the superstructure. Okay? So when we speak of the infrastructure, we are referring to the economic base of the society. Okay? And we talk about okay, two things. We talk about the means of production and okay, the relation of production. Okay? Whereas this one refers to the superstructure. And when we speak of the superstructure, we refer to the ideological elements in the society. And what are those ideolo ideological elements in the society? Okay, we can, for example, say religion, okay, and then another, for example, state, okay, education, another would be culture, or another would be, for example, fashion, even architecture, pwede natin isama, even sexuality, and any other ideological elements, okay, in the society. Okay, so, now, if we're going to take into consideration, okay, first, what is the means of production? For Marx, the means of production refers to the tools that are being used in the society, including man's labor. Whereas the relation of production refers to the social mechanism of production. Particularly, it answers the question where to produce, what to produce, and to whom to produce. Now, in the ideals of Marx, okay, according to Marx, basic talk, okay, in the ideals of Marxism, those who are in control of the means of production are the ones who are in control of the relation of production and therefore also have the control of the, the superstructure. Those who are in control of the means of production are the ones who are in control of religion, state, education, culture, fashion, okay, and any other ideology, even sexuality, even architecture, etc. Okay? So that is idea, okay? And for, for Marx, in his historical materialism, okay, that there are five epochs of history, and then we have the primitive, we have the, as, we have the slavery, okay? This one is uh, the primitive, okay? The slavery, and then we have another is feudalism, and then the other one is capitalism, and then okay, communism. Okay? So different societies, epoch of society, would have different social structures. Okay? And in order to understand it better, okay, it's better to take a look at it in our context. For example, okay, before when I was still teaching, for example, uh, I'm teaching Philippine history. So I'm using Marxist historiography. And what I did is I, I divided the Philippine, Philippine history into epochs, into social structures. Okay, for example, the pre-Spanish, and then we have the Spanish colonialism, and then we have the American colonialism, and then we have the, okay, for example, neo-colonialism. Okay? For example, this is the pre 
the Spanish, and then the Spanish, and then this is the American, and then this is the neocolonialism. So now we could see the difference between types of societies, right? Okay, because the social structure is extremely different. During the pre-Spanish, it's entirely different from the Spanish, and then the Spanish is different from the American, and the American is different from okay, neocolonialism. And we can take a look at it by looking at the infrastructure and the superstructure. For example, during the time, what is the means of production? Or what are the means of production? Okay, then what are the relation of production? To whom to produce, where to produce, and okay, what to produce. Okay, and then I know of dominant ideology. So we are speaking here of dominant ideology. And when we speak of dominant ideology, we are pertaining into Okay, this ideology is controlled by who? By the ones who are involved of or in control of the means of production. Just like for example, during the Spaniard, during the Spanish colonialism, it was the Spaniards, even though there are only few. During the American period, it was the America. Neo-colonialism is still, okay, okay, because Philippines is considered still a, a new, a, a, another colony with respect to capital. Okay? So that's why we're going to take a look at it, okay? For example, okay, ang ginawa ko uh, in, in reports sa Philippine history classes ko, okay, ginagawa ko in Prelly, okay? I have a, a, a objective, and the objective is decolonizing the colonial mind. So I ask my students to compare and contrast two different social structures. Okay, for example, the three Spanish and the Spanish. Okay, hanapin nyo, yung religion, yung state, Ano yung gobyerno, ano yung education, ano yung culture, ano yung fashion, ano yung architecture, ano yung sexuality, sige, empty, hanapin nyo. Okay? And then afterwards, okay, after the activity, I ask them you know, which do you think is more civilized? It is the first Spanish or the Spanish? Okay? Of course, the majority would be saying it's the Spanish colonialism. It's because of religion, for example, architecture, probahay na, Bahay kubo, bahay na bato, right? Okay, even with regards to fashion, right? From, ang pinako na pagunawa nila is from bahag to, okay, for example, coke, di ba? So, yun yung isang consideration, okay? And, their claim is, Spanish colonialism is more civilized than Spanish, or pre-Spanish. And then, I, I would say, uh, if that is the case, we need to be thankful of the colonialism. Because without them, okay, we will still be living into diba, barbarism. That is the justification. Okay. Pero, then after that, they are colonizing, and I would be telling them that we are more civilized okay, prior to the arrival of the Spaniards. So, yun yung ginagawa ko. Okay. So, that is how I, I look into. Maganda yun, medyo medyo convincing yung theory. Okay? Even for example, di ba? Makikita mo, for example, ngayon, ang mapapang dominant ideology is still Roman Catholicism because they are still the ones who are in the means of production. They have a lot of money. They are still very powerful. Very influential. Okay? For example, it's, it's the rich who are in control of the state, the government. Okay? Sino man ang determine ng... Kaya nung papasin mo, tayo ba lahat ng mga individual, we need to conform with with social structures. It's because if we're not going to conform with the social structures, what could happen to us? For example, why do we need to attend the university education? Diba? That is part of the ideology. That is part of the dominant ideology. Okay, is it clear? Questions on this? You understand? Okay. Now, that is with respect to classes. Okay. Even education itself. Okay. Those who are in control of the means of production are the ones who are in control of education. So, here we could say that okay, Marx is already giving us a clue. Marx is already giving us a clue. That education, any ideology is not a neutral activity. But it's always political. It's because those who are those who are involved in the means of production 
are the ones who are in control of ideology or better still the super structure. Okay? Malinaw. Pero, kung papansin natin, how about, for example, in the context of indigenous people, in the context of ethnicity, in the context, for example, of, okay, uh, I, I have once, a American study, you know, about gender. Kasi meron tayo mga pinatawag na hegemony. When we speak of hegemony, hegemony are violent, yet we, we don't really know that, we are unconscious of it, that that is oppression. And one of those is, for example, a gender struggle. So when we speak of gender struggle, it's between the sexes between, for example, male and female. Okay? For example, it's not in the family, okay, oppression is not only with the parent and son relationship or kids relationship. But it's also, you can see it into the mother and father relationship. Even brother and sister relationship. But the problem is we cannot see it, it's because this is something that is being normalized and legitimized by the social structure. Okay? For example, ito yung mga mag-report about feminism, pero BBA ko na rin, you know. For example, okay, uh, nung unang panahon, okay, women are not given, okay, opportunities to attend school, particularly higher education and learning. Anong katwiran? Mag-aasawa din naman. Bakit ka mapapasok? Right? Sino na lang ang papapasok yung dapat? Ang lalaki, bakit? Kasi siya ang magpo-provide. Siya ang magiging breadwinner na ng family. Okay? So, if that is the case, makikita natin, okay, na there is parang distinction between yung sexes is that madidistinguish din natin with regards to the abuse of work. Okay? Because work can be, there are two kinds. Meron tayo tinatawag na productive work and then we have the reproductive work. And the productive work are since the bread meat. Pag sinabi natin productive in exchange of something that is valuable, something that is monetary. Right? So that's why mga nalaki, sila ang pumapasok, okay? Because they are expected to be the bread meat of the family. So it's because sooner or later they will be working, okay? They will be working. Ang mga babae, hindi na because they will be only limited to the private affairs of the kitchen and nurturing of the kids. So, the problem here is, is there a problem with that? Okay. There is a problem, it's because men are most more exposed into the public sphere and women are only limited into the private sphere. Kung mapapasin mo, tingnan mo, ang dami mga politikong lalaki, mga piloto, engineer, Diba, bakit issue pag may babaeng politiko? Diba, may babaeng piloto? May babaeng nag-graduate ng okay, sa PMA na top natcher? Right? May babaeng, babaeng abogado? Parang, parang bakit sa big deal? Bakit laging headline sa news? Right? It's because before, there were given less participation in, in the public sphere. But now, mapapansin natin that the dynamics of society is changing. Right? Women are already given okay, opportunities in the public sphere. Okay? Ito pa rin naisip ko, ah, mamaya, if you share it ito. Women are already given okay, uh, space in the public sphere. For example, kayo, ikatrabaho na. Can you say that 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 is a good news to you? That, that is empowerment? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, sasabihin nyo yes. But, there might be hegemony in it. Okay, lalo na yung iba sa inyo, ano, mga single pa, yung iba, mga asawa na, na yung hegemony. It's because now you are working. But, the problem is, you are forced to work into shifts. You are productive work, and then after that, at home, who should do the productive work? Normatively. Who should take care of the kids? Who should cook? Who should do the laundry? Who should prepare everything in the house? Pero babae pa rin, ha? Kahit na sabihin natin yaya, hindi yaya eh. Babae pa rin. Diba? Normatively, sino? 
Ito nga eh, ito nga may kwento ko. Bakit napakadaling maging tatay? Ako, napakadaling maging tatay. Kasi pag hindi tatay, if you are just a good provider, tatay ka na. Pero pag hindi nanay, napakahira. Kasi pag hindi nanay, hindi lang kahit katatrabaho ka, good provider ka, hindi ka nagpapakananay. Kasi bilang nanay, kailangan ka rin mag-alaga ng anak. Kasi sooner or later, sasabihin, hindi mo nilagaan ng anak. Pero hindi naman dapat yun. False ideology nga yun eh. Diba? Kung mapapansin mo na, okay, with, with regards to inequality of sexes in gender, kung mapapansin mo, okay, bakit ang mga babae, they are trained to be a good wife? At ang mga lalaki, di ba, ang mga laro ng mga lalaki, kung mapapansin mo, ano mga, mga anak ko, ang laro namin, 5 years old, 3 years old, wrestling, masyadong physical ka na maglaro. Ano? Pero, pag siyempre, pag babae, di ba, kailangan ng mga laro, Barbie, cooking, cooking, something that is not too physical, di ba? Because what is the expectation after marriage? Di ba? Pero mali yun. Kaya may privilege na yung pinag-usapan natin. Oh, privilege. May privilege yun ako as me. Pero alam ko na mali yun. Alam ko na mali. Kaya nga, we are in the family, we are, we are practicing shared marriage shared work. Walang, hindi porke babae ka ito yung gold mo. Hindi porke lalaki ka ito yung gold mo. But I'm not speaking na sabihin mo, yung asawa mo, sir, may gala pa naman. Pero hindi naman talaga siya kwersado. Parang napakaswerte mo dahil may asawa ka naman. Pero kung tutuusin, dapat, di ba, ginagawa naman talaga niya yun. Eh, ang problema, you are forced to work in two shifts. First shift sa office, second shift sa anak, sa bahay, kaya yung third shift. Yung third shift pa, sa asawa. Diba? Hindi kong ang asawa pa, ma, ano na pagod ako? Sa akin ang patanong sa parang hindi sobrang ang pagod sa opisin. Maling nga lang, duktukin kita dyan eh. Ikaw pang pagod, hindi ko ba alam kasi ako pang buwis ng mga umaga, alas ito, alas ito, ako pang luto. Tapos ulit pa natin, nag-prepare pa, etc. Nag-lunchya pa ng mga ano, nag-laba. Tapos pumasok pa ng office. Tapos nagmamadali na pagpasok mo, paglabas mo, nagmamadali ka na makapasok, maka, makauwi. Tapos ikaw, pahinginom ka lang ng konti para hindi ka na-traffic. Tapos pagdating mo, pagod ka. Diba? Tapos ikaw, nagluto ka pa, etc. Ang matindi nung pagdating mo, Medyo naulit ka pa ng pagluluto, sasabi, wala akong kwenta pang asawa. So, ay tega, nagbukos na niya tayo. Diba? Kaya, ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. Ano, while you are still young, habang wala pa kayong asawa, no, tapusin niyo na muna ang PhD niyo. Ako sa MFA, ang PhD na kayo, tuloy-tuloy na. Ano, ayos na yan. Para at least, pag nag-asawa na kasi kayo, suicide dyan. Dapat pag mag-aasawa kayo, kahit wala kayong pera, meron kayong prenup. Kahit yung pera, prenup. Ano ang prenup? Ang sweldo ko, sweldo ko. At sweldo mo, sweldo mo. Diba? Kaya tapos nun, ang damit mo, labhan mo. Ang damit mo, lalabhan ko. <laughs> Bakit? Nag-asa- Kaya ba ang nag-asawa ay para may taga-laba? Diba? Ba, kaya ba ng kasawa? Parang may tagalan ba? May tagalan siya? Diba? O, plan siya po, plan siya po. O, gano'n na. What else? Ano pa? Ito mag- yun yung mga magagandang agreement eh. O, ako kaya, ako sa asawa ko, hindi ako nagdidiman. Plan siya po mga ako. Hindi, ba't ako nagdidiman? Kahit kaya pag ako, kamasuot ko lang, mga ganyan t-shirt. Kasi kinatabal ako ng plan siya eh. <laughs> diba? Pagpasok ko, oh, yun na! Oh, Ganun siya na, kaya mas gusto ko mako kaysa sa slacks. Kasi oppressive eh, oppressive sa asawa. Diba? At least ito, kahit di mo plan siya eh, ayos na. Diba mga damit ko, for example, di ko dinadala sa Batangas. 
Kasi ayaw mo na naman ng isis ko, ako naman lalaba dito. Basta wala lang, plancha-plancha, diretsyo na. Diba? So yun ang hindi kasino natin, napap- yun na, isang hindi-genom yun. Normatively, na-legitimize ang kultura. At napapansin natin, kapag dati nga sa feminism, you know, kaya mo sa school, pag hindi tayo aware, o yung mga nasa textbooks, si ma- si lalaki, mga, di ba, pag boy, ano ginagawa, pag girl, ano ginagawa sa textbooks. Yung mga community helpers, ang mga boy, mga doktor, mga engineer, diba? pag girl, teacher, nurse, librarian. Kung kahapon, we went to nag-community extension kami. You know, and then we trained daycare teachers. Pag-usap ko, kung sumabae lahat ng mga daycare teachers, bakit ko lang lalaki? O, oh, yun. Tama yung sinabi ni Ma'am Ren. Mababa kasi ang sahod. Kasi kung malaki ang sahod niyan, hindi pupunta dyan ang mga lalaki. Diba? So, yun yung konteks. Kung mapapapansin natin, napaka-complex ang question. Okay? But, ha, fear, okay, prere, di not only distinguishes, okay, of uh, the society to Okay, oppress and oppressor. Okay? What we did is we tried to take a look into the nature of the oppressed and the nature of the oppressor. What is the nature of the oppressed and what is the nature of the oppressor? Okay? So, now, okay, what is the good thing about Prere is that okay, Prere is not only a Marxist. Prere also borrowed okay, concepts and principles and philosophy from existentialism. Okay? We also borrowed a okay, concept from psychoanalysis. Okay? Because he wanted to take a look at it, okay, particularly in the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed. What is the nature of the oppressor? Okay? And here, okay, Melody already mentioned about okay, the fear of freedom. Pero titignan muna natin. You know, Ah, uh, bakit ganito mga oppressor? Bakit ganito yung ugali nila? Bakit ganito yung gawin nila? Bakit ganito yung mga behaviors nila? Okay? So according to it, there is oppression. It's because, okay, ang psychological disposition of the oppressor is, okay, o yung pagka nila, being, their being is heavy. Okay? To try to imagine. Their being is heavy. For them, for, for them, Okay, to be is to have. That is the kind of relationship. And we can take a look at it with, with regards to relationship. Okay, yung mga oppressor, ano sa tingin nila ang relationship? Relationship is not an I and you relationship. Relationship is an I and it relationship. I cannot exist. Okay, para hindi nila hindi na na maano nila pag wala yung ano. And things, people, okay, even, even environment, are things to possess. Because their view of okay, reality is heavy. Something that they can uh, transform into material uh, possession. Okay? So, and even he mentioned, okay, Eric Fromm, okay, na ano yung tingin? Yung klase kasi ng love, eh, yung dalawang klase. Okay? Meron sinabi siyang sadistic love. Okay, pag sinabi yung sadistic love, ano yung sabihin? Ito yung tinatawag na, okay, na love of death. Diba? Si, si, na-influence din kasi siya ni Sartre, okay? Kay Sartre kasi, ano ba yung relationship? I don't know whether you and relate to it. For Sartre, relationship is due to fail. Any kind of relationship is due to fail. Napaka-anong mga ito. Napaka-pessimistic. Napaka-nahita. Pero hindi ko alam kung, kung, kung kayo ay kung kayo ay uh, ano dito. Kung tingin nyo ay totoo ito. Ano? Bakit? Because any kind of relationship can be either resulted into either masculism or sadism. 
sa isang relationship, for example, may asawa ka, pagkatanong mo kung bakit, for example, ang mag-asawa ay tumatagal, kung bakit tumatagal, it's either ang isa doon ay masokista, yung isa doon ay sadista. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng sadista? Yung sadista, yung sadista siya yung lagi pinagbibigyan. At yung masokista, siya lagi yung nagtitiis. Kasi pag hindi ka nakapagtiis, hindi hibalay. Diba? Yung ibang din yung relationship mo. Kung sino ang nagtitiis at sino ang... Diba? Sir, wala nga po. Talagang pang PhD na. No? Ang habang buhay na dalaga. Ang habang buhay na dalaga. Ayos lang yan. Kasi pag, pag PhD na, everything will follow. Saturday, even, diba? Madali na magka-boyfriend pag PhD. I can buy you! Oh. <laughs> 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 diba parang gano'n? Pero diba, I prefer it na yun ang relationship kung mapapansin mo. Kahit ang relationship ng inyong mga magulang, sino na titiis, sino, sino na laging na bakit sila tumatagal? Natatawa ka nila pero titignan mo sila. Diba? Sino ang masakista, sino ang sabista? So yun yung according to SART, yung klase ng relationship. Pero yung sinasabing being, instead na yung I and thou relationship, ang tingin ng tao, ang tingin ng opreso sa kanyang kapwa, I and E. Sadistic love. Ang tawag doon, meron pang binanggit si si wrong, na knock on feeling, love of death. Mamaya, makikita natin kung ano yung interest sa iyo. Okay? Tapos, okay, sa kanya, okay, pag mawala yung mga bagay, okay, mawala yung mga bagay na to sa kanya, there is actually the fear of freedom. Kasi to, to be free is to have this one, to have these things. Diba? Now, what is What is the okay, nature of the oppressed? Okay. Of course, they, they don't have. They have the have-nots. Okay. And they wanted liberation. They wanted, they wanted freedom. Okay. Right? And for them, in order to escape this kind of mess, is they need to what? See, they are the ones who recognize that there is oppression. It's because they are the ones who experience oppression. Sino pa makakaunawa ng kahirapan kundi ang mga may hihirap? Siya pang ang kumakalap ng mga sigmura, di ba? Siya, sila lamang ang tanging makakaunawa ano, ng, ng kahirapan. Uh, meron mga uh, ibang nagsishare, no? O, sino nakaranas na nagulang ng bangus? Nagsitsyan niya. Di ba meron corny? Ano yung body court? Kaya, sino yung nakarana sa inyo? Ibig sabihin, hindi kayo gano'ng kahirap. Wala pa nakakarana sa inyo nun eh. Kahirap. Siguro, pansipyan ko, na lang. Mga pagkain na nagpo-cover yung house. Huwag natitipid. Gano'n ako dati nung nag-cover ako nung boarding house ako. Walang tour ka sa Pasikanton o Sardinas. Pero yung right to imagine, oh, muna na nga sa Sardinas kung isip nila, kung bakit bangus pa? Diba? O, yung idea pa ng iba pagpag. Diba? Kung makapansin natin. Kaya nga, tayo nakaka-lucky pa. Pero sino pa mas makakaunawa ng pang-apit yung busy na? Pero sa kanila, para makawala doon sa kahirapan na yun, ano yung gusto nila? Gusto din nila magkaroon. Ina-identify nila ang sarili nila that to be, okay, not, okay, to end oppression, but for them, to end oppression is to be an oppressor. Okay? So, now, for Pwere, He said that 
okay? Since it is the oppressed who are the ones who can understand their own oppression, okay? of course, ang problema kasi ng mga oppressor, they're not going to give way in order to realize freedom and liberation. Because what they're going to do is, okay, everything that they have, they're doing, okay, for the sake of helping the oppressed, is just a form of false generosity or false char uh, charity. Diba? Yun yung sinasabi ni, ni Pere. Now, for, there, that's why there is really a need, okay? There's really a need for the pedagogy of the oppressed. We need to educate the oppressed, okay? And what kind of education? This education is considered it as, okay, we need to change their consciousness. And this kind of education is particularly what we call critical, yung tinatawag niya critical consciousness. So that, okay, the oppressed, okay, during their education process, sooner or later will not become oppressor. Kaya nga, maganda din yung gamitin si Rizal eh, no? Sabi ni Rizal, Rizal did not join the revolution. That's the reason. Okay, marami nang sasabi it's because of the words do not see interest of Rizal. No. Rizal did not join the revolution. It's because, okay, Rizal knew because of his historical materialist sensibility that after revolution, there would be what? Okay, there would be another form of oppression. Kaya nga, sabi niya, what is the use of independence if the slaves of today will be the tyrants of tomorrow. And he, 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 he promoted okay, education through civic virtues. Pero what kind of education? Wala ka sino na explore mo. Okay, wala ka sino na explore. So yun ang explore ko. Particularly this critical pedagogy. Now, in order to understand it better, okay, so here, prere, is trying to convince us that there is a way in order to end oppression. And this way of oppression is that, okay, and this way of ending oppression is, is through education of the, the oppressed. Okay? So, how did he came up with this? It's because, di ba, kung babalikan natin yung Marxist analysis of society that is divided into the infrastructure and the superstructure, okay? And Prere was not just influenced by Marx, but he was also influenced by Althusser, where if Althusser made an intervention of the society, under the intervention of understanding Marx's theory of society, wherein, according to, okay, parehas din, almost parehas, okay? Parehas din ang ginawa, okay? For, nagdagdag lang siya ng description. For Althusser, sinabi niya na meron tayo, okay, Ang society, yes, it's divided into infrastructure and superstructure. It's between the means of production and the relation of production. Pero yung ideal of ideology, maahati pa rin natin sa dalawa. Meron tayong tinatawag na ideology at meron tayong tinatawag na repressive state apparatus. Okay, and when you speak of repressive state apparatus, okay, so, ibig sabihin, paano yung the Marxist framework, who are the ones who are in control of the means of, of who are the ones who are in control of the repressive state apparatus? The ones who are in control of those who are holding the in control of the means of production. So in Pensinabi natin repressive state apparatus, okay, there is the legitimacy of oppression by violence. Violence, okay, or we can see it through military and police intervention. Yan ang mga tinatawag na repressive state apparatus. Now, di ba, alam natin ang mga ginagawa ng kapulisan, ang mga kasalindulunahan, pinaprotektahan nila ang konstitusyon na inaagir sa pagustuhan ng Estado para magbili ng status quo. Right? If you go on this with it, yung mga ginagawa ang profiling ng mga yan, even sa mga teachers, sa mga bakla, sa mga muslim, di ba, sa mga teachers na may bulo ng act, party list, ano, yan ay gawain ng repressive state apparatus. Nagagawa sila ng pananakot. Ano, yung mga labeling na red, red tagging. Diba? So, buti na lang, hindi ako na-label na red. 
Pero pula-pula talaga ako. Pula-pula. Pero I'm against also the ideas of the Communist Party. So, ako ay for a fair nila. And hero in the chat naman. So, meron tayo. Pero meron, ibig sabihin, the repressive state apparatus also controls by violence and fear. Right? Pero, meron din another form of control which is something that is invisible, yet public. Oh, yun ang mga ka. Yet public and private. And here, okay, Althusser said that education, okay, religion ang tao na ako na means of social control. Basta religion mo. Dito sa Pilipinas, tingnan mo, noong na Roman Catholic lahat, subjective lahat sa religion, lahat very subjective sa prior. You try to imagine isang prior na may control ng isang bayan. Diba kung tutuusin, isang prior, yung kasap sa kukin, mag-isa lang mo rin eh. Wala naman, kasi yung kasundan na ha, diba? Isang prior yun, pero bakit? Takot na takot. Diba? Ang tunig yung puti, diba? Pag prior yun, pastila. Kaya nga, pag, di ba, pag na, yung mga Friday, puso na, mga Friday, nagkakaala. Tapos pag nagkaala, akala ay napagkinihan ang Friday. Yung pala, anak na ng Friday. Puso yun nun. So, di ba, yung kumapapansin mo. O, tapos pag na, kung dati-dati, di ba, pag ito mo, ano na lang natin, based sa aking experience, ano, nabutan ko kasi na sa probinsya when I was still attending elementary school. Eh. Kasi sa Catholic school ako. So, nung tumatasak ko sa Catholic school, uy, they cheat, are gay. Kasi yun ang pinakasigat ng school sa amin. Pero ngayon, hindi na Catholic school ang sikat. Diba? Ang mga sikat na school na ay mga Ivy school. Diba? Mga Brent. Walbord, di ba? Mga Stony Horse. Di ba? Hindi na mga Catholic school ngayon ang mga sikat na sikat. So, ibig sabihin, nagbabago na yung means of social control. Okay? For Althusser, education is an ideological state apparatus. And as an ideological state apparatus, this okay, ideology teaches, okay, individuals to be submissive to the state without any force of own. So as for you to be a functional a citizen in the society. Okay? So, kaya nga, kaya nga, kaya nga, kaya nga, kaya nga, kaya Now, even, ah, sino nga nagbasa nung kay Renato Consentino? Kay Renato Consentino, kanda, medyo pinakita niya na education can be also a powerful tool so as to go against colonial education. And he offers, what he offer is particularly what we call a nationalist education. That an education that is truly Filipino. Pero how did he arrive on that? Okay? So for Prere, sinasabi niya ngayon, for Prere naman, there is a way in order to get rid of this oppression. And this can be done through Education. Kaya lang, ang problema, dito tayo papasok sa sa chapter 2. Kasi, how do the classroom everyday life, kung ano nangyayari sa class, sa, sa society, what is happening in the society mirrors the classroom everyday life. If there is oppression in the society, which seems to be very invisible and hegemony, now, in the classroom setting, subjectification also happens. Or socialization happens in the classroom. By a looking, kaya lang, ganun kasimple lang may prere. Napakasimple nung 1960s. By a looking into the teacher and student relationship. Okay? How do the oppressor legitimize oppression in the classroom? Through the banking model of education. Wherein, okay, according to Freire, okay, education suffers okay, from the racial sickness. 
Ano yung sabihin ng narration sickness? Mamaya, hindi ko rin explain ko farther ko. Okay? Ito yung tipo hindi ko maintindihan ang mga itinuturo. Okay? There is really where well, you, well, you really cannot decode the code. Diba? It's, it is suffering from narration. Because what we have is okay, the backing model of education. Okay? And what is the relationship? Binanggit dito kanina, pinakita mo ba sa Angela yung no relationship okay, ng backing model. Diba sa backing model, as if the teacher is the one who is acting as a depositor. And kailan mo lang winigidro. Kailan mo lang winigidro sa mga estudyante mo yung pinag-aralan nila. During exams. Okay? At papapansin mo, meron yung binigay si Prere na sampo. Okay? Na karakteristik. Kata na yun. The teacher teaches the students are being taught. Okay? The, the teacher knows everything and the student knows nothing. What else? Ano pa? Okay, sige. Miss ano? Okay, the teachers take and the students are Okay, the students take and the students are talking about. Next. What else? Oh, the, the teacher the, the teacher talks and the student listen meekly. Okay, what else? The teacher disciplines and the students are being disciplined. What else? Okay, the student, the teacher is to, uh, the teacher chooses the program content and the students adapt into it. Okay, what else? Okay, the teachers are the subject of the learning process and the students are and the learning objects. What else? Balo pa lang yun. Bilan pa? Dalawa ka tayo. Okay, how about the computer's authority? Okay, ang tanong, yung nangyayari ba ito? Yes or no? Lahat? Take a look ah. We need to take into consideration. We need also be, to be very critical of prayer. Eh. Baka naman hindi na ito nangyayari. Kasi eh, pwede for example sa K-12 na nangyayari sa Pilipinas. Yan ang bagay natin ng teacher-student relationship. Are the students... Hindi na lang ba yung student-teacher relationship? Tingnan nyo, yung number one. Hindi na. Kasi yun yung claim ng mga students ko. Sir, this is not anymore true. This is not anymore true. So meaning to say, we are not using backing model of education. Tama? Or are we using, are we still using the backing model? O sasabihin, that, yung nabanggit ni Andrew Marina, that traditional. Diba? Kasi surprisingly, during my discussion last week, Okay, when I ask my students, okay, with regards to the keywords, what are the keywords that struck you most? Sabi niya, Sir, the backing model, okay, or why? I first heard it from our supervisor. Supervisor? Surprisingly, it comes from your supervisor. <laughs> Parang ironic yan, na nagaling sa supervisor mo. Okay, ano sinabi? Okay. The teaching process and teaching learning should not anymore be the traditional or the backing model. It's because in teaching learning. Like, oh, what? Ano? Ayun na nangyayari, ginajustify na ng na, 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 K-12, okay? Ang kanilang gawain na dapat ay, okay? Ganito na yung ginagawa hindi. Pero in yet, baka naman ang practice pa rin ay backing pedagogy, backing model pedagogy. Not necessarily, backing model of education, it's because it created a kind of illusion to us. Akala lang natin wala, pero meron, meron. Diba? Pa, paano meron? Sige. Ito maganda. Mas enjoy ito. Mas enjoy. Palta natin. Let us change. Let us change the teacher from teacher to the end and students to teacher. Palta natin, isa-isa. Diba? Enjoy yun! Okay? Sige, number one. 
Sige, Michel. Okay. Tama, yes or no? Pack or block? Next. Ako, talagang mura na yun, ma'am. Pinanginig ko yun. Okay, what else? Sige, Angelo. Number two. Okay, ano? Baliktad? Ano ko baliktad? Basta ko makiyam kung ano. Pero ano ngayon na nangyayari? Sino with regards to policies? Sila nagtuturo, even with the curriculum. Diba? O, number two. Number three. Okay. Ang dami training. Diba? Makawala naman po yung mga training. Okay, next. Okay, next. Okay, talagang sunod lang ang teacher. Oh, ito daw talaga. Okay, what else? Number five. TV, di ba? Okay, what else? Oh, the Tech Ed chooses program content. Oh, di ba? Ganda ng curriculum ba? Pwede ni... Ayos na lahat. Parang wala ka na yung mga ibig na. Araw-araw na itong gagawin mo. Okay, what else? Okay. Diba? What else? O, pangkito pa lang yun. About eight. Sige, ano? Ang ano niya, eight years, ano? Si Melody, bakit hindi mo pa makikita? Lalo hindi makikita, napikit eh. Di ba nagtatangan doon sa malalabong mata? Pag gusto mo makita, yung pumipiit mo ako. Sige, Melody. Okay, di ba? You don't anymore. Parang feel the academic freedom of the teacher. Number nine. And number ten. Basahin ka na lang, di ba? So as you can see, mapapansin mo, seemingly, yung teacher-student relationship wala. Hindi malinaw. Hindi, hindi Kasi, ginawa yung illusion. Okay? It's because, What we are doing now, when the deaf and adapted particularly what we call neoliberal policies in education. So it means to say that indeed education becomes what? An ideological state apparatus of capitalism. Kaya kung mapapansin mo ganun, bakit may standardization, etc. Bakit ganun? So it still follows particularly the banking model. It's not anymore, it cannot be anymore seen in the classroom every day life of the teacher-student relationship. But, ang problema nun, isa ng malaking scam. Kasi if we even try to, ito nakakalungkot eh, parang we even try to take a look into with all the problems that we are experiencing with education, we always try to take a look on the ano ba talaga ang problema? We try to... Ang dami naman natin, pepe, maraming naman nagsasabi niya nila, hindi talaga mag-work din. Diba? Even, we have rin natin kung saan kino, ayun na, meron na siya sinasabi. Pero why don't we follow it? Uh, that is another problem, okay? So, now, okay? How can we counter? Ang kagandahan mo ni Prere, okay? He also presented a way of countering banking model. And here, We can counter it through a problem posing evolution. Here, makakasin natin that there is a dichotomy, there is no dichotomy, okay, between the teacher and the student. 
Gusto ko yung naging explanation ni, ni Angelo na problem posing. Diba? So, sa problem posing, okay, dito, ma ang chapter 3 kasi, para mas mauna nga natin, sa chapter 3, you can understand, okay, the problem posing, via the relationship between the world and the world. Diba yung explain ko last time? Okay? That they can be only what we call dialogical education if there would be a reading the word and reading the world. So what we are doing now as a teacher to the students, as if para kaya para din natin the students know nothing, it's because what we are doing is we are providing words to our students. But our students have already their own world. Meaning to say, our students are not tabula rasa. Forget about janda. Matatanda na mga sudyante natin, even kids. They are not tabula rasa. They have already their experiences. Diba we are shocked? Okay, we are shocked. It's because, okay, for example, the claim of the deputy officials of Bicol, that the students, 70,000 students cannot read. Dika lang, anong kategory ng reading? Anong kategory ba ng reading? They can read the world. Kasi hindi mo ito sila. But the problem is, they cannot read the code. Diba, ako, I'm teaching my son to be nag-tutun pala ako pag nagpumupunta ako pag nabalik ako sa province. So, kaya gabi, nag-tutun pala ako din yung tuluan ng kapahan ng magbasa. Pero marunong, marunong naman na siya. So, ibig sabihin, habang natutuwa ako, habang tinuturo ako siya magbasa, marunong na siyang mag-decode. Buti-uti, marunong na siya. Kahit mga simple, okay, mga words, okay, nakakapag-decode na siya. Kahit yung bigyan ko ng mahirap, Okay, the words, nakapag-ibog na siya. Diba? But, ito yung challenge eh. This is a challenge to us. We are providing words to our students. But our students have their own world. But in order to have a dialogical relationship, okay, we should transform this word to the, to, these words to the world of the students. It is not the students who is going to conform with our words. Kasi ang nangyayari, okay, doon natin makikita na how do we view teaching and learning? Kasi we must also be all learners of our students. Marami din tayo, ako marami ako sa inyo na tutunan based on your practices, based on our dialogues in your weekly my conversation with you. But I cannot give examples if I don't know your experiences. Because the challenge is, your concept, you know, philosophy is a very difficult word to decode. You know? And I should bring it into the level of your world. So that sooner or later, okay, the word that I'm telling it to you now will be transformed into a new world, into a praxis through your series of reflection and action so that it will be formed like a cultural action. Diba? Kaya nga, ganda ng example ng kanina sa chapter 3. Okay? Paano nag-decode? Merong ginagawang, merong, yung, when I was reading the reading the word in the world of prayer, and Macedo. Si Macedo yung nagbigay ng uh, preface dun sa Pilagod of the Opress. Yung red ba yung binasa mo? Yung, yung red na Pilagod of the Opress. Anong cover? Red, you cover... 30th anniversary. O, oh, 30th anniversary. Kasi masaya yung nagbigay ng ng pre-praise na yun. Okay? So, anyway, di ba? Uh, ano doon? Paano nag 
hindi ko. Kasi ito yung dami prayer eh. Kung nasasabi niya itong mga bagay nito, it's because that is based on his practice. Kasi nagturo siya sa Brazil ng mga editorate. Adult learners. Kaya may inasay ko si Angelo kasi nagturo sa Aris. Anong subject ang tinuturo niya? Spice spell. Parang ang hirap na magturo nun. Paano ko ba magtuturo sa kanila ng doon na meron na silang mga experiences? Lalo na kung ituturo mo pa yung mga diba, mga dogmas as if na they need to go to the world of the students. Ang ginagawa nila, nagdi-decode. Kaya niya, paano? Paano ang ano? We are providing words for our students. And the students should be able to decode. Kaya nga, pumunta yung naming. Naming the words. Ano yung mga naming the words? Okay, for example, dun, yun kung nga bang yung si prayer, yung mga tinatawag na generative themes. Ano yung mga generative themes? Ano? Yung generative themes, kung ano yung nasa, yun ang tinatawag na real localization and contextualization. Kung ano yung nasa paligid, okay, pumunta mo nasa naming the words. Naming the environment, naming the world. Diba, for example, baka naman, minsan, for example, in science, yung exemplar mo mali, gumamay lang pa rin, pero you are teaching okay, anatomy of plants okay, or botany to the, the sum of the farmers. Parang mali, you know? Dapat you should learn from them. Diba, because they have already their practices of planting. Diba? Even zoology, they have an indigenous way of understanding, for example, animals. Bakit ito yung mga practices nila? Right? What else? For example, ako, ngayon, ang ginagawa ko with regards to that biological approach is I'm doing philosophy for children. That's the reason. It's because I know that children are better philosophers than academic philosophers. They are even geniuses. They are even more of a natural scientist than us, than an academic scientist. Kasi natural sa kanina yung pagiging yung wonder and curiosity. They keep on asking and asking questions. Kaya lang problema, misan, ang pumapatay na ng creativity ng mga batang ito ay ang educational system. Bakit? Because we want them to conform with our words. Pero ang words naman nun, nagiging parating lang. Diba? Parating of the words in our assessment, how do we assess our students? And that is particularly okay, one consideration that na, na tinitingnan ng prayer. Okay, particularly, so we can, sa akin na, in my experience, we can, we can learn from our students if we just know how to listen to them. Where do we have time to listen? The problem is, minsan na no, sa sobrang ano lang po ito ng bahay yun lang sa klase ako nga sa atin nagigirapan ako eh kung bubukusay ko mag freelance kung spontaneous discussion hindi eh kasi ang nangyayari hindi nakabalo ko topic din eh pero what I should not worry naman I should not worry kasi full pack naman yung magiging discussions natin kaya lang ang worry ko kasi at least kailangan mag-discuss ko pa rin ko For example, prayer, I can discuss it for one term. One chapter tayo per meeting. Diba? Pero may nahagod na si tayo eh. Pero ang hirap. Diba? Try to imagine a certain topic. Nakabunin mo. Tapos mga competencies pa. Nakabunin mo. So, now, for, for Pere, okay, there would be real education if there would be dialogue. Not just a dialogue between student, teacher, 
but the dialogue with the word and the world. Okay? Now, next, in chapter 4, okay, Melody, chapter 4, uh, it talks about, Freire talks about crucial action. That there are two kinds of crucial action. And what are those? Okay, we have the anti dialogical and then we have the dialogical. Okay, so the anti dialogical are the cultural action of the oppressor or the oppressed? The oppressor. Okay, and the dialogical should be the cultural action of the oppressed or particularly the revolutionary leaders. Now, okay, here, Freire, okay, identify four types of dialog anti-dialogical action. And what are those? Melody, what are you Quest. Conquest, number one. Okay. Next, number two. Divide. Divide and rule. Next, number three. Manipulation. Okay. Ang apat. Number four. Cultural invasion. Okay. So, now, what, is, what do you mean by conquest? As a form of anti-theological. What do you mean by divide and rule? What do you mean by a manipulation? What do you mean by a cultural invasion? So, balikan din natin. At least may pang-counter din dyan. Ano, may pang-counter din si Freire for the Yolotokan. Okay, for conquest, ano yung pang-counter? We have cooperation. Next, we have for divided rule, we have organization. Organization. Okay? Next, after that, manipulation, we have community. Ano nga yun? Unity, I think. Okay? And then next, we have for cultural invasion, we have cultural synthesis. Okay. Tingnan natin ang compass. Okay, what do you mean by compass? Piling at tayo nga kayo para piling na po kung may papaliwan ko. So please all stand. Okay. We can take a look at it with regards to the process of communication. Okay. And how do we communicate? And we wanted to, of course, communication has something to do with the chain. Right? Okay. And here, okay, I wanted to form a circle. Form a circle and please hold the hand of your chipmate one because you need it. Stand me. <laughs> okay. And then now, okay, press the hand of the person who is on your left. Press it hard. <laughs> left, ha? Left. Dapat yung nasa left. Now, what did you feel? Did you feel a certain form of conquest? Diba? So, kung papansin mo parang, okay, when you speak of conquest, that is only a one-dimensional relationship, right? As a kind of one-dimensional relationship, parang, masyarakat, pinipigilan yung, kanya, ano na yung kamay mo. And then, all of a sudden, okay? ang problema sa kompes, na legitimize sa yung kompes, na kahit gano'n kasakit yan. Diba? Nasasarapan ka pa. Kasi masyado na siya, sa pagtagal ng panahon, masyado na siya na legitimize. Right? How about divide and, divide and rule? Okay? How are you going to, ano? Okay, so ganito. Okay, sa divide and rule, okay? Yung nasa left, subukan mong itaas 
yung nasa yung partner mo sa left pero yung nasa right ipigilan mo yung pagtaas ng kamay pero sa kabila ano? sige you do it
Tapos takot pa ako. Para kasi pinapalabas sa sobrang dami mo trabaho. And yet, there are so many people that can exempt. Diba? That's a form of manipulation. Another, okay, the treatment of your employee, employer and your family, you should not accept that. You should not detach. Ano? Kasi bakit? You are not my family members. If you are being treated, if you are treating me as your family members, you just treat me as uh, as your employee. It's because family members are not paid in washing the dishes and doing the dirty work in the house. Ano yung lagi na lang? Iwai. Diba? Pero siyempre sa iba, nakaka-touch. Kasi yung mga, diba yung... Pag siyempre, pag mga bossing-bossing, yung simple yung tabik sa'yo. Mga nakasalpi ka. Eh ako, maghanap ka sa Facebook ko ng selfie sa mga dati kong head sa private university. What ah? Narurumi lang ako mga loyalty pa rin. Ang gagawin ng buhay. Mga, man, mga manipulative, manipulative rituals yan. So that makikita nila na sinasabit mo yung sarili mo sa ano. Kaya ako naman, sabi ko, eh alis din naman ako dito. Banda-banda rin Kasi hindi ko talaga matatagalan na. Diba? So, that is a form of manipulation. Diba? Kung mapapansin mo, any organization, yung divide and rule, ang kami niyan, ang pinapag-inagawa ng ating mga, yung even mga managers. Manipulation, cultural invasion, sa education system, matindi ang cultural invasion. Mas matindi ang mga western concepts na pinapakita sa atin kaysa sa mga sarili nating practices. But, for prere, there is a room for theological action. And we can do it through, okay, number one, organization. We need to organize. Diba? What else? Ano ba yung hindi ko kanina? Melody? Unity. Unity. Okay? Cultural synthesis and dapat yun eh, cooperation. cooperation. Diba? So, for that is one, okay, na in, in, in organization, okay, towards these things, there will be a theological relationship. It's because it's not only the, kasi meron tayong mga pinatawag na pseudo, mga pseudo revolutionary leaders. Yung mga pseudo revolutionary leaders, they don't know how to listen to others. <laughs> sa kanila, it would be better na ako na lang ang gumawa ako na lang ang gumawa at ako na lang ang mag-desisyon para sa kanila for example, marami marami mga, ito mga nakikita ko ano. minsan kasi there's something wrong with for example, decision making if we don't for example in, in policies and even in decision making Diba? In certain institutions. Minsan, nag-iisip, hindi natin kasi makuha na nag-iisip tayo para sa ating mga kasamahan. Pero hindi natin alam kung ano yung pangangailangan at kagustuhan ng ating mga kasamahan. Diba? O, ano ba? O, ano ba yung mga example? Marami, marami. Even for example, oh, diba? bakit, why is that our buildings, mapapansin mo, majority of our buildings here in the Philippines are not PWD friendly? Bakit yung forms of architecture natin hindi PWD friendly? Ano yung mga pangangailangan ng mga Kasi we don't include them in policy making. We don't include the minorities. Diba, pag pumunta ka ng ibang basa, mapapasin mo, maganda na kami nila eh. 
Bakit hindi mga tusok sa demon? Pag naglalakad ka, nangalis sa mga mga tusok na sa demon. O bakit hindi mga tusok-tusok? Yung pala, para sa mga blind yun. Para pag naglalakad sila, hindi sila nangangapakalan. So yun na rin sa sila. And even pagdating sa elevator, pagdating sa escalator, right? Mas umaan yung ano, na parang ang gamit nila, nababukala sila sa escalator, pataas na. Minsan, hindi makapansin ko yung mga rock na PWD rock na parang padulos mo sa na. Kahit ako, kahit na ako'y merong, kahit na ako'y able, ano? Parang babanga, babanga sa na ka. Parang gawin na lang padulos mo sa, hindi po gano'n. Diba? Kasi we don't think from them in the policies. Okay, yes, policy, policy, policies are good. But the problem with policy sometimes is if we don't include teachers, there might be oppression. If we don't include other stakeholders, for example, why do you why do you feel that, for example, the curriculum guide is so oppressive? Not just oppressive to students, but also oppressive to the teachers. Ang dami yung reklamo sa mga curriculum guide as teachers. Ang daming competency, ang daming tactic, yun et cetera, tapos siksiga na, yun et cetera, bakit? Because you are not included in the crafting of the curriculum. Bakit, for example, why if there are so many monitoring processes and tools that is being given to you, you have so many complaints? Because you're not giving consideration for dialogue. So usually here in the Philippines, okay, we can take a look at the one manifestation of anti-dialogical form of leadership of cultural action is through through a top-down approach. Usually, ang mga nasa top or inside para sa mga nasa bottom. But in order for us to have a new cultural action, we should use the bottom-up approach. We should listen to the teachers, the students, to even to the minorities. Then after that, there should be policy making. Okay. So questions, concerns. Thank you very much, Kalimato.